hopefully we're recording and it's going to hear everyone is your mic like facing a weird direction steve or something my mic is about three centimeters away from my mouth all right hmm. it does sound a bit muffled eh? yeah it sounds a bit muffled like it's like twisted or something or yeah i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of like the yeah. Swedish chef. Excellent. Merk, merk, de merk, de merk. Borf, de borf, de borf. Hello, today, Lou. We are making the chocolate moon. That's the one. First, you get the chocolate. Mm, yes, mm. No, 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 chocolate. Then you get the moose. Moose. Here, moose, moose. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, so just quickly going over what you found out last time. What did you find out? Uh, so, we found out that the boat that was attacked was belonging to some bunch of... Uh, what was his name? Somebody or other, Khalid or something like that. Tyrans. Tyrans. Uh, Tyrans. It's all flooding back to me now. Khalid or something. Yep. Uh, and he... Um, and he this black Simba. Yeah, no, black. Yeah, it's gone through several different incarnations. It's black Sabat, and that's it. The black Sabat. Yeah. The black All Sabat. I remember is that there were a lot of people fucking about the. I remember we were talking about our our options for the what we're going to do, and the plan was to get out of town before the Inquisition get here, and we were going to stop by the swamp town on the way to the the other town, I can't remember its name now, the one that we think may be involved with all this stuff. We're going to check the Elenthra. swamp town that's next to... Yeah, we're going to check the swamp town that's next to the dragon on the way. Coombe. Yeah, yeah, Coombe, Coombe. And then we're going to continue to... What was the other city up north? Big one. Yeah, Calanthra. the big one. Calanthra. Calanthra. No, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Calanthra. Yeah. yeah. That, that was the plan. The plan was to get out of Dodge before the Inquisition gets here because, um... Yeah, they uh, hold they hold that they bloke away that we were talking to, and um, we think they might come for us next potentially. Mm -hmm. So and so was trying to be a guard, or yep, yep. I think that's where we landed at the end. Okay. And Sid Sid was sneaking in through a window or something. Or no, no, he came and he told us stuff, and then yeah, I remember. Yep. yep. Okay, so you're at the little inn making your plan, worried about the Inquisitors. Worried about the Inquisitors? Yep, coming to collect yep. you. Yep. And, um, well, if everyone everyone else was, had pretty much agreed to the plan, right? Um, yep. I'm pretty sure we'd... I mean, I reckon we should basically... We were going to charter a boat to the swamp, weren't we? I don't know if you're going to charter a boat, but you're going to try to get onto a boat, yes. Okay. Chartering a boat would be very expensive. Okay, well, jumping on a boat or yep. jumping on a something to get there. Yep. What would the options be? So, chartering a boat would be chartering your own boat, right? You would You would basically be finding someone to take you there, yes. Yeah, just, just booking passage on a boat, basically, yeah. Okay. So, you're going to have to go down to the docks for that, or you can call into the... Um, Merchants Guild, where they post the boats sailing in and out of the port. Or you have to walk the docks and see by you know by talking who's going where. And um, my gut instinct is to stay away from the docks just for this second. And if there's another way we can find a mm -hmm. book a passage on a boat, like through the Merchants Guild. Yep. My gut instinct would be to go there first instead of just walking the docks, sort of inviting danger from. Okay. Position, etc. Are you all going, or just some of you? Um, well, I'll go if anyone wants to come with me. That's cool. Lomax, we'll go with you. Uh -huh. Cool, cool. Excellent. Okay. Um, so, is this the next morning? After uh, we'd all... Well, they were coming later that night, so you guys thought it was very quick to, you know. Alright, maybe instantly then. Maybe. Yeah, maybe we just go then, then straight away. Yeah, before sleep and whatnot. Yep. Alright. So we head out immediately. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. We tell everyone else to get their things ready. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, you should go on. 
Um, you get down, it's, it's getting late. Um, there's, there's the usual sort of traffic, night traffic, well, early evening traffic. Um, the taverns are starting to get a bit loud. Based on everything, do we know what the tides are likely to be doing at this time? Like, is it going out? Because that'll be the next time any new boats are going to be leaving. Rightio, well, you would be the person because I just need to get an intelligence check from you. It's uh, sort of your... Intelligence check? A D20 or 3D6 or whatever? 3D. Sorry? 3D6. Uh, hang on, hang on, 46. 46. 46. Got a chance of going over. Dice roller. N out by one. Okay. Um, you're not really sure what's happening with the tides. But um, you would know where to go to ask somebody. You'd sort of know who to ask on um, if you could just quickly get it to, you know, close to I the docks. Like, yeah, I feel like if anyone's going to go down the docks probably be Melody who's sort of more you know she's got more dock swagger yep and wouldn't stand out as much so if anyone's going to ask around the docks for information then I'd say Melody would be the go mm -hmm. that's if you want to expose yourself but you know it's up to you we can always me and Lomax can always just go to the uh, Merchants Guild and see what we turn up there okay so yes. you, you and Lomax are off um, looking at the Merchants Guild um, what's Melody doing uh, Melody is indeed going to head down to the docks and use any maybe um, connections she has with any of the yep. boats she knows. Okay. Um, well, the next tide to go out would be in about two hours. Okay, oh. so yeah. Perfect. Good time. Um. Um, and the person you're talking to at the docks sort of points you out to, it's a sort of a... It's not a ship that you'd really want to get on, but uh, you know, it's it's a low sort of fishing come cargo hauler sort of ship. It's um, got a a wide bottom, so it can get easily into the close to the to the shore and that sort of stuff. Um, and not a particularly know, fast the, ship. Given the the, uh, the swampy area around, mm -hmm. uh, Coon's likely to be. You know, shallow, that might yep. be a good thing. Yep. And it's the sort of place that such a boat might want to go, so it might be a little bit less conspicuous as hiring a bigger boat to get to such a location. Right. So yeah. You, you're walking over to talk to the, the so, folks? Yeah, I'm. Uh, okay, there's a guy um, leaning on the post as, you know, you've got one of those boards going up. Um, yeah. The, there's a guy the, leaning at the top of the board, just sort of just looking. Yep, um, I'll sort of, you know, swagger up. Um, does it look like they're getting ready to head out? Or uh, there is some like business, and people are getting stuff ready on board the um, deck and storing <laughs> stuff, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'll swagger up and... Uh, would you be the captain of this fine vessel? <laughs> no, that, I would be the first mate. Sorry? I would be the first mate. Ah. Where would I find the captain? You'd yeah, find them in some tavern somewhere. Okay. Ah. Right. So. Um, no ideas which of the taverns he's likely to be in? Uh, I've sent the boys out trying to look already because we're due to leave soon. Right. Well then I have a business proposition for you that you might be able to sort of accept on behalf of the captain. Mm-hmm. Um, <coughs> me and some associates of mine have an urgent uh, communication slash errand? No. Yeah. Message would be the best word for him, wouldn't it? Uh, that needs to. Oh, can you guys still hear me? Yep. Yep. Just everything that's died. There oh. we go, and I'm back. 
Um, yeah, uh, we have an urgent message that needs to be delivered to uh, the village of Coon. Um, Coon? Oh. Yeah. So uh, we were wondering if your vessel, being the you know the sort of shallow bottom vessel it is, that uh, could get us there uh, and do it safely, might be interested in you know uh, passage there for me and what are we five others, six others, six all together, uh, seven, seven all together, seven sorry altogether. seven all together. Yeah. So yeah, for seven, seven folk. Hmm. Right. Well. Uh, this is uh, wouldn't hey, be wouldn't much be. of a va uh, passage. Uh, you'd have to sleep on deck. Uh, you'd have to share the. The conditions aren't so much the problem. It's the the fact that it looks like your boat's ready to sail on the tide. Uh, uh huh. And uh, we would be willing to obviously compensate fairly. <laughs> fairly, it sounds like you're really, really needing to leave for Coon. Messages of urgent importance. Mm. Um, so, I do believe I'm uh, permitted to offer uh, at this point three, uh, sorry, thirty silver pieces for yeah, seven yeah. of you. For uh, seven. And hopefully you would remember that low max actually comes as a there's a one there's a point five attached with low max. Oh, is he bringing his fucking donkey? <laughs> and by fucking donkey, I'm not too sure what he does with that thing. But, anyway... Um, well, sorry, yes. plus a donkey, yeah. And I use him as cover from trading. That's right. Yeah, alright. Um, oh, I just don't know what the other bloody team members have got in the way of coin. Did no one come with me? Mm -hmm. Nope. City! Silver. So yeah, silver. The equivalent of three gold. You, six other people, and a donkey. Yep. Well, uh, um, you would have I'd an idea of what we'd have, wouldn't you? Uh, I just don't want to be offering too much of other people's coinage. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> no, you you'd have an idea that we have a reasonable amount of coin. Like, a lot of people have put coin in the training fund slash. Yeah, the training fund, but you know that we have, you know, 30 silver isn't that much for us. You'd know that for sure. Well, it's three gold, and I mean, most of us have got, you know, four in our like, uh, training fund and things, but... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Between the seven of us, though, so do what you got to do. Okay, well, one sec. So, yeah, so what are you offering then, uh, Melody? Uh, yeah, okay, so we'll say... Well then, 30, 30 on departure, 30 on, uh, on arrival. Wow, said I'm sure the captain would be happy with that. Okay, well, um, you've got half an hour to get your people here at the most. Okay, well then, I'll, uh, you know, sort of, you know, uh, Yo, know, thank him. I'll go quickly grab everyone and the. So you're going to get the other two first, who are just sort of settling up, looking at all the different ships. Oh um, yep. Yep. So Thea, there are a couple of ships leaving. There, there's um. There's a couple of taking passage, um, people on passage, but they're all in all different places. There's one that goes past Coombe. You have to go down to the dock and ask the um, captain if he'd um, send you ashore. Sure, we could convince him to put in at Coombe. Oh, sorry, I'm not there. So, yeah. aren't you? You're at the mercenaries, at uh, the mer the merchants guild. Mm -hmm. That's where this is happening. This bit. Oh, is oh. it? Sorry, yeah. yeah. Someone bust, someone busted in and and has verbally abused me just then. So I had to okay. go on mute. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, All right, you. so this is at the merchants guild, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, so we've been informed there is a boat. Yeah. And, um, it's it's sailing past Coombe and could be, well, I mean, yeah, I asked if he could be persuaded to put in at Coombe to drop us off. Well, you'd have to talk to the captain and All right. uh, you get the location of the boat on the, on the docks. Yep. All right. Um, so as you're heading yeah, off, so you see Melody sliding up to you. Yep. Yep. So, um, 
I'll mention that we've got half an hour to get everyone together. I've found a, a ship that's willing to take us. All right. Thanks for uh, what is essentially 60 silver. Sounds all right. We can do that. Yep. I'll rush back to the uh, the guild to get a little bit of money out of the training fund. And um, I mean, I haven't got many things, so they're good to go. I assume everyone else, um, everyone else who is a present well, pack. Once it's in the training fund, it's in the training fund. You can't take it out. Oh really? It's not a, it's I not a bank. I, oh, that, that's I have right. some silver. I have some silver that's not in the training fund, so. That's okay. right. I've, I've still got two gold on me anyway, so right. yeah, should be fine. Yep. Yep. I assume everyone else is sort of the same. They've kept a bit on them and etc. Hopefully. Yep. Okay, yep. you trot down to the um, to the docks. Uh, behind you, you can see some people in in. Um, dark sort of coloured robes sort of moving into the taverns and inns and you sort of oh, make your way towards the docks. Okay, right, well. Oh, fucking hell. We'll um, get on on board. I'll hand over a, pou a small pouch with 30 silver to the uh, first mate. Mm -hmm. There's the upfront payment. <laughs> Righty and, uh, We'll start oh. loading our stuff on. We'll start with Fulmic and we'll get him in hunkered down and hopefully sort of cloaked. Well, he says uh, you guys can go can in, in, in the... Car. Sorry? Say again? Well, why don't we just throw him in the cart and throw a, throw a blanket over him? <laughs> um, the, well, first mate, the first mate um, actually directs you to get into the hold um, yep. and... Yeah, he says make sure no one makes any stupid noises. Aha, uh -huh, it's all going to him. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we stow away as best as we can. Radio, so yep. you, you get down there. Um, you can hear some voices. Um, it would seem that um, about five or ten minutes after you sort of all settled in, there's someone who's wanting to board his ship. Um, he's making a bit of a someone dance about it, saying you can't just come on to any ship you want to. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, the boat's rocking about. <laughs> uh, he says, yeah. Um, you, what you do on land is what you do on land. What we do on sea is what we are. That's our our business. Um. So you hear Reach some people life. talking yeah. to him in very stern words, threatening. Um, he just says, sorry I can't help you without the captain here, and the captain is probably in no fit state to answer any questions anyway. But you're welcome to come back in about, oh, I don't know, tomorrow morning we'll be here, I think. Yeah. And he should be <laughs> at least awake and in a much more finer fettered state. Yeah, politely whispers, these people are too drunk, they're slurring their words, what are they saying? No, it's not that they're drunk, you're just hearing snippets of the conversation as best you can. Yeah, are there oh, sort of okay. voices enough that we can actually listen? Oh, um, they're outside! What, okay. about, what about those of us that have actually got the tech noise? Okay. What's your How chance? do I know if I've got that? You don't. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's yeah. two. There's two amongst you that do. <laughs> what's what's oh, your chance? Okay. Oh, um, actually, everyone does if you want to strain, but um, I'll have to look it up. It's very, very limited for non-human for humans. But yeah. uh, what's your chance? <laughs> um, like eighteen percent. Uh, no, you're not hearing much. No. Um, fear ain't hearing much. Fulmic isn't hearing much. Um, v Vi Viac 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 whatever is sorry I can't remember his name Will's character's name doesn't uh, hear actually doesn't hear anything with that twenty pity um, I've already rolled for Nod Fun um, so Lomax nope and Melody um, Melody have done nope so no you're just hearing bits and pieces you can't really make sense of it well you can make sense of the first mate because he's quite clear. Um, he's obviously having an argument about someone coming on board the ship. He's possibly leaning on the whole door and therefore a bit closer. Oh, I, yeah, okay, I'm, um, yeah, yeah, I'm with you guys now. Yeah, someone's trying to, someone's trying to approach the ship and, yeah, alright. Yeah. 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 So, once again, the whole, uh, 
person busted in. That's all good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm. Seems like well, we got out we in the nick of time. So you ride think? it out and hope that he convinces them not to board. Oh. Yeah. Um, it's it's about I don't know, sometime later, ten, fifteen minutes later, um you hear some singing and uh some with some difficulty getting someone on board. Um apparently the captain's arrived in a fine state. Ha. Ah. And the um, first mate then gives you orders to set two, um, and you can you can definitely feel that the ship is moving. Beautiful. Um, and just probably slowly moving its way out of the dock area out into the bay, and then off up to the uh, northeast direction. As I can actually, you know, figure out that at some point if I can get a view of the stars or something like that to figure out that we are going the right direction. Uh, you have navigation. Uh, no, I have nothing. I'm just a swashbuckler. Okay. So. Well, um, let's say you've got a chance. So, um, roll 46 and tell me how much you get under your intelligence by, if you get under anything. Ah. <laughs> Bang on. Bang on, okay. Well, you think you're heading in a direction that is going to be helpful. Right. Okay. Well then, um, I suggest that as a group we, you know, don't trust anybody on the open water, given that there's <laughs> a sea of pirates half the time. Um, we don't know what they're carrying, so it could be anything. Um, although, you know, let's put it this way. I'm sure that based on the cover that we got from the guys above, they're willing to, oh, they're in it for their money. And they probably hate the Inquisition as much as we do. Yeah. Um, or whoever it was, but, you know, let's uh, set a watch so that we don't get tied up in the middle of the night and fucking, you know, sold as human slave traffic. Oh, mate, forget that. Yep. I'm, I'm with you there. I will, um, I think uh, we're in the hold, right? So I might just have a wee poke around. Okay. And having said about a watch, this, this hold is atrocious. I'm going to step outside and just sort of, you know. Well, before you step outside, um... Are we allowed to step outside? The, the captain doesn't know we're here, so I would say stay down. Oh, right. It's the first well, mate swindling all the money, isn't Who it? Who knows? You don't know what's going on. But know, right? um, yeah. uh, after about 15, 20 minutes of movement, um, you find that is, he's in. Hello, Will. Hello. Right, so you're on the ship. You're just, just leaving harbour. Um, the first mate just looks down, he says... And he's just directing people, and then every now and then he just says, "Keep your heads down. We're still within sight of land." Uh -huh. Oh, I think we made some people very angry by their gesticulations. Hang on. Hello, and he gives them a backhand wave with two fingers. Hello, back to you, good sirs. Um, <laughs> which you can see. Um, it's it's a, a cloudless night. There's a moon one of the two moons that are up. Um, so, um, yeah, it's all easy to see. So, as you're talking, he says, so I'll introduce you to the captain in the morning when he slept off his celebrating. Um, <laughs> I'll tell him the terms. I'm sure he's quite happy. He'll be happy with them. At least it'll keep him in good ale for a while. Um, but while you're on board, uh, you might be called upon to do a little job here and there to help. Um, otherwise, try to keep out of the way of the men. They know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Um, I'm going to start sharpening my axes. Right. Sounds good. Um, so it's a good hour before he sort of um, tells you it's okay to come up on, on deck. Um, and introduce you to, to a few of the other deckhands. Um, make sure that they pass the word around that you are uh, sailing on board passage to Coombe. Um, and at the sign of any problems, um, he says it might be best if you leave the, the donkey down there. 
um, and you might need to go down there again should there be any um, happenings at sea or you might be need to be on deck if there's any other sort of happenings at sea Fair enough He says I hope you brought a lot of food and water, we've only got some basics on board so no? Okay, he says. Yeah, we'll, we'll just get the cook to water it all down. No. So, what? you guys sort of settle in for the night. Um, they've got a canvas that goes over the deck hole, hold hole. Um, so, you sort of uh, semi-protected from the elements. You will find a, a place where it's generally comfortable enough to those of you who want to go to sleep, go to sleep, and those of you who want to stay awake, stay awake. Um, the ship itself is a two-posted um, ship, so I was just trying to look for the um, speed at which she goes. So there's a moderate breeze. Um, ugh, wrong. That was good. Nope. There's a moderate breeze going, so the ship will move fairly happily. Um, anything else you want to know? No, not particularly. Um, as long as I'm, you know, sort of fairly certain that we're keeping the land on our right hand side. Mm -hmm. that, that we are going the right way. Mm -hmm. Who's Should taking over from your watch? I'll take uh, I'll take first watch. Okay. Or second second watch, whatever. If someone's yeah. Okay. Well, well you've been if you've been, if you're on first watch, then probably we'll say Melody's told you make sure that on this side, that's where the land needs to stay. Hey Steve, is your mic worse than usual today? No, everyone's yeah, been saying it's it. Really but I don't know. It's, it's muffled as a. Uh... Can't help it. Sorry, it's the only one I got at the moment. Yeah. No worries. Um, you got so a sock over it. <laughs> we got more than more. Does that matter? Have you tried an unplug replug situation? It's a wireless thing, so no. Ah, uh, <laughs> I see. All right, yeah, no. And cool, it's cool, been cool. sitting on charge while I've been away, so it is yeah. charged up. Um, just I don't know why, but it's just how it is tonight. Um. What was I saying? Sorry, yeah, so you're moving at a fairly good clip. Um, not super fast, but quite fast. Um, and so Lomax, your shift roughly, you know, um, it's pretty good because they keep a good watch on the hours um, on ship. So you get a measure of three hours or four hours, depending on what length of your um, watch is going to be. What's it going to be, Lomax? Four. Four hours, okay. So you can see that, that land sort of... They stay within sight of land, um, but they're moving along the coastline. Yep. Um, as it's time to... I've got to remember the map because I don't have the map with me. I do, but it's on a big sheet of uh, a, a bloody big page, which I've got to try to shrink down to get to fiddle with it digitally. Um, the island's not there yet, no. So it's just all water around you and you would say half a mile to a mile away would be the coastline. So if anything okay. happens, it's going to be a damn fine swim. Um, the evening's quite clear, it's quite cool, uh, crisp air, it's... Um, so just so you know, the lake uh, sorry, the Sea of Salt is actually a freshwater sea. It's not a saltwater lake, uh, sea. It's actually a huge, huge lake, but um, it's called the Sea of Salt. Um, so, now for the big roll. Any encounters at sea? Damn! Double damn. Triple damn. Okay, who's oh, after you? 
Who's Vaki that doesn't mind. Vaki. Okay, Vaki, so you, you're told the same thing, you know, this side of the ship, keep land on that. If it changes, we're heading the wrong direction sort of thing. Um, as keep I said, one of, the, one of the, you're about right on the right of between the a, a, a half a mile to a mile of land, so you can see it all the time. Um, yep. It's a clear sky, very, very little cloud, um, moon's up, um, probably it would be uh, waxing, it's about half a uh, half moon. Um, and yeah, you can tell that the ship is going pretty pretty well, well, as far as you can tell, it seems to be moving quite well. Um, yep. There is a moderate breeze, um, the men seem to be all doing their stuff. It's, it's pretty quiet, but they seem to know how to travel at night, under the cover of night, which would suggest some things about their activities. Uh, a ship of dubious nature. Possibly. Um, it's not the low bottom meaning that can get close to land without uh, <laughs> you know, being mm. recognized. Mm. Yeah. Millennium well, the UK, yeah, yeah. This is the ship's called the um, Century Hawk. There you go, the Century Hawk. It's got its official name. It's not the Black Squid, no. No, the Century Hawk. There you go. Okay. Um. And um, sorry. Who's after Vaki? Me. Okay, so Melody, everything is ship shape when you get up, um, after yeah, about four I'm hours. Almost, I'm also going to be paying attention to anything that may be following us. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as your eyes can tell, there is nothing following you. God damn it. Um, <laughs> not much is happening. You're just smoothing, glide, gliding quickly over the um, water. The sun starts to come up, breaks uh, in the east, and soon you're know, all golden on the water and comes into daylight and it's blue and around you starts to rousing a bit, change of um, shift on board the ship, um, you all guys seem to rouse, um, soon you can smell, yeah something's cooking, um, mm. And um, the first mate sort of peeks his head under the canvas, uh, and he says, "Well, you sort of, you know." And they rolled the canvas back a little bit. He said, "Well, you better come up for your first meal." Um, and so you sort of set up on the on the deck around the place for all the men doing their businesses, um, rope and sails and all that bits and pieces. Um, and you're given some sort of fishy, gruelly thing. Doesn't look that pleasant, but it tastes pretty good, and it definitely is filling. Um, wash it down, um, and you. As as the first mate said, as long as you don't get in the way of anyone, you can stay up on deck. But um, otherwise, you can stay down underneath the tarpaulin. It's up to you. It's a lot cooler above the tarpaulin. That's what I'm going to say. I'll happily be, you know, helping out on deck. Okay. Doing, doing what? Oh, whether it means moving the sails or anything like that. Okay, well, the men will do that, but, I mean, um, once you show them that you can actually, you know, tie rope and bind rope and all that sort of stuff, they sort of give you some slightly more menial jobs. Um, yep. But at least, yeah. Sorry, I won't say that yet. Um, what are the rest of you doing? Fia. Hmm. Matt. Okay, what's Lomax doing? Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to look for um, something to do on whether it's is there anyone like mopping the deck or doing something manual like that that I can just like um, latch on the, mo the most thing they do is sort of yeah they, they sort of the deck is pretty clean um they're yep. just checking the rigging um retying things knocking things down 
is they've got a, a someone halfway up the mast as a lookout. Um, not a hell of a lot else happening. There's a guy on the wheel. Um, you haven't seen the captain yet, but then there is that sort of small rise in the back of the boat, which would suggest that that's where the captain is sleeping off his celebration from last night. I'm going to ask if I can go up the mast and have a look. I say, well, if you get tangled in the rope and you get, um, you know, cut, that's your issue, not ours. That's fine, I sharpen my axes. Let's see, do anything to damage the rigging or the mast, you'll answer to, first of all, the first mate and then the captain. Okay. Give it a Let's go up. Let's have a look. See what the see what the crow's nest can see. Uh huh. Um. So you don't have climbing, do you? Not specifically, that I'm aware of. Okay. So we're just gonna say this is a a basic um. 46 check, and you'll get your decks or less. So there'll be a few. I'm gonna get my what? Decks. I'm gonna get my decks. Yeah. Deck. So, we'll get dexterity or less. Okay. So, 4d6. Mm -hmm. So, you want little numbers? No modifiers? Okay. I've got some in my head. Alright, oh, okay. And just tell me how far under you get. Uh, so three under. Okay. Rodeo, so you don't have that much trouble actually getting up the, the mast. Um, you sort of got to share the, the, the crow's nest, as it were, is more a platform, um, and there's a loop of rope that you sort of put yourself in. Somebody's already in it. So, yep. um, he says if you've got some rope, tie yourself on, at least if you fall, you know, you won't hit the deck. You might strangle, but okay. you won't hit the deck. Um, but anyway, you can see he's, he's, he's got it all down really cleverly, so he's, it's sort of, it moves with his body, so he's not creating any rope burn or anything, but it sort of keeps him steady, and he gives you a little bit of room to put your feet on the platform. It's not, not big. You're talking about perhaps a platform 3x3 three three at the most. That's we've got both of you on it. Um, and what can you see? Well, um, water, lots and lots of water. Uh, you yep. can see the land off to the um, starboard, the right side of the boat. Um, yep. And you can sort of see the sun as it's climbing into the sky. Um, it's sort of in the direction of roughly where you want it to head, as in like it's it's ahead of you, it's not to the left or the right or behind you or anything, because that would put it in the wrong direction. Um, yep. And the other thing would be that... Um, or I you, can, you can sort of see... Um, and you sort of the the, the um, lookout sort of yells out something, you can't quite make it, what it what, some sort of jargon they're talking. And the ship starts to veer off. You can see some sort of disturbance on the on the water. It's like a sparkly disturbance. You're not sure what it is. I'll ask him. What is that, man? What are we doing? Um, it's fish. We're gonna catch some fish. Oh, sounds great. Do you know I can see my house from here? Can you? He says. Is it underwater? <laughs> on the lane. This is so high. Yeah, okay. Um, what is Varky doing? Uh, is it, sorry, what time of day are we at right now? Um, early morning. Early morning? I guess just stretching my legs, mm -hmm. wandering around with nothing to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's like you're up near the, the um, bow, well, not at the bow, but like um, at least halfway to the bow sort of thing. Um, when a door opens up, and um, a slightly dishevelled looking uh, female in, in petticoat, you know, the um, long trousery petticoat with a tight corsety bodice sort of thing on top, um, sort of comes out and she looks at you and sort of raises her left eyebrow and, her, you know, how you sort of look, do that look. She's Salutations, friend. 
Wait, when I did we take you on? Don't know you. How did you get on board this ship? You look like you need a cabin boy. Uh, I, I stepped onto it, I guess. <laughs> We've got cabin fever. <laughs> okay. All uh, the I, was jokes in a, I was in a dream when I hopped on this ship, so I just kind of woke up here, I guess. Uh huh. Well, she sort of settles up to you, and then you suddenly realise you've got a dagger pointing in your sort of left side. Let's be careful, <coughs> shall we, friend? Always careful. I raise my hands apologetically. <laughs> uh huh. Right. Um. And then she calls out, Blake. Blake, what's this person doing on? Oh, oh, you're awake, Captain. Um, we took on some passengers. Um. If you notice on your nightstand, there's uh, half the money now and half when we just live in Takum. And she sort of gives him a look and he says, 60 silver. She says, oh, oh, well, my apologies. And she puts her dagger back and she dusts off the, the pinprick in your side sort of thing. She <laughs> says, it, you're a young, fine looking man, aren't you? She suddenly I'm says, looking at, you, looking at you with slightly <laughs> different eyes. Mm. I bow deeply, and... Mm. <laughs> right, so she sort of rejukes herself and, like, pulls her course a bit tighter, and, of course, her, her, her bosom sort of is almost ready to burst the whole thing open. And uh, she says, right, well, I'd better get more presentable, I think. Yeah. So she, with that, she turns around, closes the door. Well, I'll continue meandering about to my heart's content. Mm hmm Can you give me a 4d6, please? And tell me whether you get over or under your dexterity. And by how much? I got... one second... Uh, under my dexterity by two. Okay. So as you're sort of going around, um, you can't really get right to the back of the ship because of the captain's cabin, but you sort of move around to, 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 to like ultimate part you can. The ship does a small swing, um, there's a shout from the mast, um, and the ship sort of swings a little bit and that sort of pushes you over a bit, you sort of, sort of hang over the side of the ship a little bit before you can sort of right yourself. Uh, the ship well. definitely looks like it's heading in a slightly different direction, it's about it's gone about 20 degrees more northerly, so whereas before you were sort of heading in a more of a northeasterly direction, you're heading in a more of a nor northeasterly direction, roughly speaking, because of the sun, you can you know where it is. I'll try to quickly compose myself and probably meander a little bit closer to the centre of the ship. Mm -hmm. Righto, Lomax. Oh, sorry, what's Melody doing? So like I say, Melody's just basically going to be keeping an ear out. Um, once I hear the call from whatever it is, I'll see exactly where the the um, we're swinging towards. Mm -hmm. You can see um, a part of the um, sea that's just a little bit more shimmery from where, where you're looking ah, from. Ah, right. Okay. Um, several people start moving about, and they're I'm about pulling to say off they're nets. Probably grabbing nets. Mm -hmm. Yep. So start getting. You know, heading over there, getting uh, the nets ready to to heave. Mm -hmm. um, as you get closer, um, Lomax, um, you got the best sight. So, well, you got the best position, I should say, to see from. So, what you can see with the shimmering, this is is where the fish are jumping out of the water, um, and they sort of glide a little bit. They're sort of like flying fish. So, the, the school, just looking at the size of it. Um, it's quite large. It would be roughly the school would roughly fit on half of a football field. So it's just this constant ripple on the surface of the um, sea, um, with these fish jumping. So as you get closer, of course, they start to veer away a little bit. The ship sort of can catch up a little bit, and finally, a couple of the nets are cast out, um, thrown out by several people on the starboard side, um, and hauled up. And pretty soon there's um, quite a decent pile of uh, fish thrashing about on the on the deck. 
and people start going around with belaying pill pin, pins and whacking them on the head. I was about to say, smacking them on the scone. Yep, and then chucking them into a barrel. So one of the men looks up and says, You lot, get over here and help. Oh, Vaki will hop too. Okay, so it's, it's a messy job, but it's um, necessary. Otherwise the whole deck would be full of slimy fish. Um, so yeah, so after a good half an hour's work, um, you fill up around about seven barrels. Um, and then um, call for buckets and scrubbing off the, the grime of the fish and that sort of stuff off the deck. Um, you sort of scoot out of the way of the deckhands, they seem to know best what they're doing. Uh, the ship starts to swing back around onto its course. Um, and one guy calls to Vaki, can you help me lift this up? I need to take it to the cook. Uh, couldn't quite understand him, but I'll nod in agreement and try to gather from context what I need to do. Okay. Right, yeah. So you help him lift the drum or the um, cask. Uh, of a um, barrel of fish and take it to the cook. Excellent. Right, so you get in there. Uh, the cook's um, a very thin man with a like a pencil, like a, a very miserly pencil thin moustache. Um, going balding, he's actually quite clean and tidy, the galley looks extremely clean and all very, very organised. Does he have um, all of his limbs? Yes, he does. Excellent. Never yep. trusted cook on a ye oldie ship without all his limbs. You've read Treasure Island, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Um, so, he sort of thanks you and um, directs you where to put it. Um, and, yeah, then he sort of shoes you out of the galley. Um, I'll probably, um, if it was really messy work, I'll, I might go clean off my armour if I'm slimy. Um, not really. It's it's probably just more sweaty work than anything else. Well, that's alright then. I might just go find somewhere nice to sit and watch the bloody waves roll by. Rightio. So, the day continues to be... Sorry, just going to make the roll. Where are we? Okay, Matt. Mm. Oh, it, it continues. Great. Uh, one D. Oh. Okay, the wind starts to die down a little bit. Uh, the ship, although still moving relatively fine, um, is is slowing down a bit. What do you mean? Where did everyone go? Is that in game or out of game? Because we are sure. missing a view. Hey, I'm here. Although Fear's just been blending in, staying away from the fish slime. Right. Okay, so hopefully Lomax is asking his Lomax, not his Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Lomax. Okay, so one's okay. Ask you ask him. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, um, just gonna wait for his answer. Whether it was in game or out. He's not talking, so I wonder if he's lost the um, audio. Ah. Ah, uh, the hangout. Um, no, the hangout's up. And you're in it, like he's in it. Yeah, he's in it too. No, he's just yeah. left, he just jumped. He just dropped out, yeah, he just dropped out. Yeah. wonder how much silence he endured before he asked that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. Copy. Get down here. Paste. Send. Okay. <coughs> okay. Hopefully he'll get back on. Um, so the day again is another sort of very light clouded day. The wind is mild. Um, yeah. 
Good news, Beatrice. For the no. record, yes. Fina is hating every moment on board. Okay, and can I get her um, spells for the day? Um, yeah, hang on. Oh, let me think. Help me avoid this. Yay! Finally! An encounter. Got it. At sea. Oh. At sea, they're always so much fun at sea. Let's just have a look. Sure. I missed it all. Oh, wait. No, it's just... Megalodon. Just... It's, no, it can't be. We're in fresh water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a fresh... Fresh water <laughs> Megalodon. Yeah, fresh water belay. Well, thankfully that won't be a problem out here. One, two, three, four... Four. Okay. These are one. You know, just deciding on the type of encounter. Ooh, it's oh, a man. very rare, <laughs> massive Q red dragon. Oh fuck off! <laughs> I do not want to be I'm the next. The I do not want to be the next Chicken McNuggets. Yeah. Hide in the lower deck. Ah, oh, is getting excited. 36, 37, 38. There's 38 different things that could kill you. Yes. Mate, Fia's horrified. She's already horrified at being on the boat. Yep. Number 20. Let's see what that is. 1, 2, 3, 4, Jeez 5, 6, Christ. 7, 8, 9. Well, it's not a dragon. 10, 11. Oh. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I guess it's possible. It's weird, <coughs> but possible. Hang on. Okay, so you're not there. Well, the good news is it's not from the Fiend Folio. It's not what? <coughs> not from the Fiend Folio. Have you? Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, like there's there's three monster books in first edition. There's Monster Manual One, Monster Manual Two, and the Fiend Folio. Oh, the, the fiend, fiend Folio. Yeah, the Fiend Folio uh, is one of the nasty ones. Oh, mate. Oh, the Fiend Folio sounds bad. Yeah, that oh, can go. Can, yeah. Friggin burst there, in a fire. There's two. There's only two good or neutral creatures in the entire Fiend Folio. Now, Anything with book. fire is going to be horrific. Yeah, it is. Cool, eh? Let's just... Oh, mate. Oh, no. I've lost... something. Here we go. Your marbles. So, you're about to witness first edition full-on. Uh, no, Seven no, of them. They have not, they have not wished, witnessed first edition full-on. Because walking outside of the town only to encounter a red dragon only for your dwarf to then proceed to taunt it. Mm. That's fun. <laughs> so okay. If Falmec was here, we'd experience it full on, pretty much. Oh well. well let's let's put it this way: the name of the character that decided to taunt it was very aptly named. Chicken McNuggets. Chicken McNuggets. No. What? Hmm. <laughs> He's a dwarf. Mate, that name. I feel like he deserved everything he got. Oh. Yeah. Well, he was a good player. Mind you, there was also what was the name of the uh, the gnomish barbarian? Knee hacker? Knee hacker from the Knee hacker <laughs> thing. Yeah, Knee hacker yeah. of the Chuck Khan tribe. Oh, the Chuck Khan tribe. Yeah, that's a great book game though. Knee hacker. But Knee hacker and. Um, Knee hacker was the Berserker gnome. And I can't remember if there was an insane dwarf. I think there was an insane dwarf that jumped down holes after Umber Hogs with him. What was the one that. I can't. It was Rob, wasn't it? That had. Um, Shim. Um, back one sec. Yeah, uh, no, the one that had the. I I have a key. Uh, that could have been Shim. Yeah. It was also the guy who you gave. It was the only guy you'd never wanted a poison save from because he'd always fail. Uh, my time. map's gone. I had a yes. quick question. Yes. What accent do these people have in this town we're in, because I'm, I'm thinking about actually adding a, more of a voice to the character, but okay. um, it would be a very Well, you attempt. can think Middle Eastern, see, the the whole cam thing is based on Babylonian, Mesopotamian, Sumatran, um, Sumerian, 
Middle East would sort of be Ar Ar Arabian, Egyptian. So, like the characters from Aladdin? All right, all right. Sort <laughs> of. A very, very um, Europeanized version of it, yeah. But, yeah. Oh, wait, that, that's the closest I'm going to get. That's there. okay. Yeah. But, uh, and not today, I need some practice. <laughs> so, oh, I better find it how. Salam, Effendi. Salam. <laughs> Salam alaikum. What are we finding? What's turned up? What's turned up? What are we seeing? Um, I'm just seeing. Okay, 180 yards away is when you first take sight. Someone takes sight. Probably the guy on the watch or um, oh Lomax. Lomax, it'll be you. So you see roughly flying about half a dozen um, things that. When you actually see them at 180 yards away, you recognise that they are probably hippogriffs. Oh, ho! Hippogriffs. Mm. Hippogriffs? Is that what we got coming? Hippogriffs? Mm. How many? Hippogriffs. Around about half a dozen. Jeez. You can ride these things, right? If, <laughs> if, you, if you could raise one from an egg, yes. Oh, yeah. Alright, let's follow them back to their nests. We'll let's be catch. Rich. Let's catch a mating couple. <laughs> yes, unfortunately these ones are out for hunting. Huh. I'm going to nudge the uh, dude next to me on the on the platform and just make sure he's seen it. And then I guess I'm going to yell. He, yeah, he yells out a whale or something, um, which gets everyone, every deckhand's attention anyway. Um, yep. Several people are moving. Um, they're pulling up some... They're not really ballista, but they are much bigger than a large crossbow. So um, they've got three of these devices. Um, and another guy's bringing out some tar, another guy's getting a torch ready. Um, and I'm about to see what these creatures' reaction to you are. Cool. Um I'm feeling like I don't really want to be up here right now. Yeah, well, um, it's going to be hard because we're and in I combat. Will, I, will, yeah. I will start making my descent. Uh -huh. And as Vaki sees people loading up ballistas, I'm going to be uh, readying my crossbow and loading it. Okay. So these things seem to wheel about around and they don't, don't get that much closer. Um, you're not sure what they're doing. Um, can I shoot at one? <laughs> Dear God! It's, 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 <laughs> it's a chicken McNuggets all over again, isn't it? It's entirely up to you if you want to shoot at one. Legitimate question. You said 180 yards, yeah? Yeah. Fucking hell. You can make that shot. I can make that shot. Would you, you do you think you would to... kill a hippogriff with one shot? Yeah, I was about to say, you don't want to make that shot, but you could. Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't tried before, so. <laughs> All glory to the crossbow. Look at the pretty blue bird! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna start aiming at one anyway. <laughs> no, I won't want quite yeah. lose, lose a crossbow, but I'm gonna be aiming at what appears to be the closest. Okay. I just okay. want to get off the mask. Okay, give me a roll, Dexterity, um, 46 roll, please. Low max. That's exactly my deal. Okay. Um, you beat a hasty retreat down. Um, by this time, everyone's set up and ready. You can also see your uh, friend Varric, um uh, Vaki, sorry, Derek. Vaki really uh, with his own crossbow pointing. I'll draw my bow. <laughs> mm -hmm. I ain't fooling anyone. I'm hiding behind <laughs> one of the like. I'm I'm back against the one of the masts and trying to friggin like like just keep an eye on them from around the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to get down to the hold to protect Bruce. Of course. So Lomax gets into the hole, holding on to his bow and arrow. Oh yeah, we've got donkey bait, don't we? 
<laughs> Push it overboard. Bruce, no. Mate. So Mate. it's Mate. A, I mean Bruce, you're right. It, it's a bit of a standoff. Um, no one seems to be doing anything at the moment. The hippogriffs seem to be just flying out there around, not even circling the boat. They're just freewheeling and they're staying about 180 yards, as I said, away from you. Um, I'm gonna ask whoever's closest to me if I should fire a warning shot. <laughs> 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 Uh, okay. Whoever's closest to me needs to respond because I'm just going to follow that. Uh huh. Um. If he was next to you, he would beat you savagely, but yeah, alright. Okay. Totally not. So. We'll we'll do it this way. I'll roll a d6. A d6. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. If I get a, a 6, it's Fulmic. If I get a 1, <laughs> it's the second mate. Oh, if it's okay. anything else, it'll be a deckhand. What does the deckhand say? What, did, what was your question? Should I fire a warning shot? He looks at you and says, Do you think you should fire a warning shot? What did he uh, say? Do you think you should fire a warning shot? I'll say this is my first hippogriff, friend. <laughs> I'm oh, a first flying bird creature, more accurately. Uh -huh. I would say. First flying well, bird, um, my my old daddy used to say one thing: it's a long way from here to the shore. Just remember that. <laughs> How strong a swimmer are you? I overhear this conversation. You know, I'd say, "Hey, yo, know, Vaki, would you poke a bear with a stick?" His <laughs> answer that would be yes. <laughs> yeah, otherwise it depends how big and sharp the stick was, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the stick is as big as your crossbow bolt. Done, mate. Done. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll hold off, but I'll be my trigger finger's getting twitchy, mate. Twitchy. Uh huh. So they sort of hang around for a good five, ten minutes, and then they just move Back away. Off. Yay! Yeah. Oh god, catastrophe averted. Okay. So with that, the the team one the 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 large crossbow is left on its mount that was closest to where they were um, or yeah and the others sort of pack them down and they get back on with their business you can just see it back he's like wanting to like go up and manhandle the crossbow like Ooh. oh man yeah. <laughs> take it with me can um, I get well a it's, it's a, get a it has to be with... mounted this, this, it has a like a um, a ball on the underneath of it that fits into a socket, and that's how they. Right. How do you visits. keep tension a crossbow? By the way, do you just empty fire it or whatever? Uh, no, I you to empty can, fire it. but yeah, so... what you would do is you'd hold the tent, you'd put it, you'd mount it like you've got a bar at the bottom that you put your feet against, and then you yeah. pull back. So in this case, you'd put your bar across your feet on that. You'd hold the string and then you'd release and then yeah, let it down it. slowly. Yeah. Because you right. blank yeah. fire it like that, you you tend to weaken the um the strength in it. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll do the cautious, safe mm -hmm. for the crossbow and me way. <laughs> Radio. Lomax, what are you doing with your arrow that you still got there ready? Well, seeing as how I've obviously scared the hippogriff off, I'll. Uh, Re okay. Requiver. 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 Requiver my arrow. Requiver your arrow. Okay. You must be feeling highly elated to have scared off like roughly half a dozen hippogriffs. Oh, I scared a dragon off earlier. I don't know if everyone knew that, but that was me that scared them off. Oh, right. Okay. Great stuff. So the rest of the day is, it's hot, but as I said, the ship's moving at pretty good speed. Not as fast as it um, was the night before. Um, the captain makes an appearance, um, and so what I need to know now is, I need your, just the men, your heights and your weights, she's not probably going to do much with, um, oh, hang on, there he is. Alright, uh, Vaki is 6 foot and 185 pounds. Yep. Lomax the Swordsman is six foot five and two hundred pound. Right. Jesus. Fucking hell. 
Thank you. Good evening. It's Sid. It's Sid. Ah. Oh. Hi, Sid. Oh, yeah. I only just got the email now. Okay. I, did, I sent one out at the beginning of the game just to make sure, just in case you didn't get the first one. I sent it last week. That's all cool. Um, so, at the present, you're on a ship speeding towards Coombe. The group has just managed to not engage a flight of Hippogriff. Sadly. <laughs> you really do have a death wish, huh? They're just birds. <laughs> right. Uh huh. Right. Birds, birds. the sizes uh, of horses. It's a griffin with a horse's ass. No. Pretty much. Their shit from that height alone could do damage to you, mate. Mate. So you say. Right. So the captain comes out, and um, uh, also Lomax, what's your charisma, and what's yours, Vaki? My charisma is 11. And Vaki? Uh, charisma? Yes. 9. Right, Lomax. She sort of passes by Vaki and she sort of says up to Lomax, well, didn't settle up to him. And so she looks at, the, looks at you, put her hand on the hip, and she says, So, I take it you're the leader of this group. Well, how was... How astute of you. <laughs> so tell me, and she puts her hand, uh, her arm around one of your arms and she leads you along to the prow of the ship. And she says, so tell me, um, what was so important that you had to leave Kira Star so quickly? question. I'm hoping there's a good answer, she says. Mm. We were bored, and we seek adventure and fortune elsewhere. So you're the thrill of adventure, huh? Nothing else? Pretty much. So we, could turn, a, we could turn around now and head back to port and there wouldn't be any problems. And you would be 60 silver pieces lighter. True. And as to the price of 60 silver pieces for seven individuals and one donkey, that's quite an extremely fair fare. Your oh. first mate farted well. <laughs> yes. Well then, um, I I appreciate you not wanting to give away your group secrets. Um, perhaps I can have a name for your band. Crimson Hounds. The Crimson Hounds. Have you heard of us? You must have heard of us. I have heard of the Crimson Hawks and the Bloodhounds, but never the Crimson Hounds. So where do you operate, oh. mostly? They're imposters. They're imposters. Mm -hmm. So where do you operate? Oh, you know, here, there. Wherever and a bit of everywhere, I guess, us. she says. Wherever right. the wind takes us. Mm -hmm. um, she says, so what, tell me, if you're such a, a good group, um, tell me something I might have heard about you doing. Scaring off a dragon at last town, mate. You, uh, you may have heard or seen the dragon a couple of nights ago. Uh -huh. Mm hmm. Yeah, we scared that off. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> from, from where I was, it didn't look like anyone scared it off. It looked like it had finished its business and then, then bugger off home. You clearly didn't have a good vantage point then. You were obviously <laughs> in the wrong place. She was on was from where I was standing, that dragon was pretty scared of us. Right. So you're dragon chasers, huh? So you're going to chase the dragon down? Well, no, not in this particular case. But if we were to happen across it and had opportunity to find its horn, then we would probably take that. Oh, Jesus. Ah, right, okay. Well, she says, 
Very good. So I can help you move your this horde that you're going to perhaps find at very well, competitive rates. Well, we when we find it, we could potentially, we could potentially find it. Mm. But let's not let's not talk details right now. No, let's not talk details. Perhaps perhaps you'd like to come to my cabin for a a wee drop. I knew you were the adventurous type. <laughs> She says, we'll see how adventurous you are, my friend. Can I invite a friend? <laughs> she says, <laughs> uh, perhaps later. <laughs> All talk. <laughs> Vaki says it out loud while laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Good. From, from the rear of the boat, PUSSY! <laughs> <laughs> This is no, oh, with she a says, bit of constitution. She says, she says, sorry, I didn't realise you were that way. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not that way. I'm not that way. I'll see you in your cabin. Right Come then, on. let's go well, then. Lomax she knows says, his way around the sword. That's why he's learning yeah. the sword. So he's been shamed into it, mate. Yeah. So you enter her cabin. It's very nice. It's all very <laughs> semen-like, not very feminine. Oh, uh, except for the Seaman beard. Like. And Lomax is excited now. Yeah, yeah. but like it's the <laughs> <laughs> the beard is um let's I say it's... Behind. who who's been taken in Lomax. Eh? Lomax and the doors closed before anyone else can get in. I'm gonna saddle up beside Varky and be like <laughs> five coppers says that she outlasts him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. I'll take that. <laughs> it all comes down to the tie roll. Uh, we, are, we are talking about them getting drunk, right? Yeah. Mm. Well, Lomax being poisoned, one of the two. Uh huh. Okay, there's a whisper for you, Lomax. Yeah. There's a what? A whisper for you. It's something in yellow that only you can see. In the chat. Yes. Done. Okay. Right. Done. Right. Do I have to roll for that? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 no. <laughs> you don't want to tempt fate and lose on that one. Um. No. But anyway. Wouldn't want to roll a one. No. Well, perhaps it depends on what you want. Um. The rest of you, what are you doing? Uh, Fia's finally stumbling up from where she's been cowering the whole time, opening the door, and can she see Vaki or, um, or Melody? Yep, they seem to be towards the back of the, towards the port, the bow of the, no, the port, the starboard of the ship. No, God, yeah. the stern of the ship. I assume no one's yeah. taken her any food this whole time? No, well, apart yeah. from breakfast. Oh, well, she's going to scowl at them and ask where the food is. Well, one of the dickheads. Not even lunch have, time. Have you no. have you done some no, work so, yet, Lassie? I was say, someone, so someone, so someone right. took her breakfast. All right, if if they took her breakfast, she's not that angry. Yeah. She's still pretty damn angry. I mean, yeah. those who she's don't work don't. Slump down next to him and look dishevelled as all hell. Uh -huh. Say it. I hate boats. Yeah. Hate Do you now? He says this old old soft years. Well, let me tell you a story. When I was five, and he's a bit of a rambler. I was about to say, as long as he doesn't bust out the piano accordion or the hurdy gurdy to go with it. In life is a bit. Yeah. Um, no, I'm. I'm just going to quickly take note that since one of our members has been dragged off, um, you know, these guys are armed with what exactly? In the event that this starts turning pear-shaped on us. Well, I'm just pointing my crossbow at the first mate. What are we talking about? Put it at me. Put me out of my misery, mate. <laughs> okay. Um, but beyond that, I'm just going to keep keep ready. working away, um, but keep an eye out on any massive congregations of them sort of looking like they're about to start ganging up. No. They're all doing about their business. Cool, cool. Uh, it all seems to be very ship-shaped. 
Um, cool. Hmm. Um, the ship continues forward on its planned, um, well, on, on its trajectory, and um, the shore is going by. Um, there doesn't seem to be any other encounters. You're sort of moving into the early hours of the evening now. Um, there's some food being handed around. Um, it's a fresh fish stew. Very, very tasty. Ooh. And there's a measure it's a of ceviche. <laughs> there's a measure of rum to go off, chase it down with. And some of the men get a little bit um, more. Um, so there's some that are going about the business, and some of them are just a little bit more um, sort of taking things easier. Some of them start up singing, and you know, da da da, da all that sort of stuff. Um, whether you join in with them or not, it's up to you, but they sort of are separate to you. Well, so <clears throat> I'll probably uh, gamble away the measure of rum, if uh, anything, and purposefully lose. Okay. No, mate, Marky um, will take you up on that action. Okay, fine. Okay, so Beer. we're going to roll dice. We're going to have a game of trying a pyramids. Fear wonders what the hell is going on in the cabin since everyone's sitting out front of the door. Well, you know, see maybe when you're maybe when you're old <laughs> enough to explain it. If those but if those boats are rocking, don't go and knock in. <laughs> she snickers. And sort of sort of leans in a bit closely, see if she can hear what's going on. Right. Okay, so Nope, nothing happening there. No. Uh Vaki. We're gonna have a game of pyramids. So okay. So what you do is you roll three, we start off with placing your bet, and um, you can't bet the whole thing in the, the first round, so what are you what are you betting? How much of your measure of rum are you betting? A half portion, I guess. Half of it, okay, you roll 3d4, um, and then from the results there, basically what you've got to do is continue to roll less than your previous rolls. So out of your group of 3d4, um, if one of them is a 4, then when you roll the next 2, not this lot, but in the next level of the game, you roll 2d4, and they've got to be 3 or less, and if they, if you get a 3 out of those, or 4 out of those, you're lucky, then you get to bet 4 rolling 1d4 to try to, you know, so it's just, right, you're trying, so to roll, get, trying to keep unders. I roll 3d4 first, yeah? Yep. And now, that's good, yes? Yep. Oh, that's great. They only do one roll on mine, so hands are good. One, one, <laughs> two. This guy may as well bail out now. Yeah, this guy is not very happy. He sort of looks a bit um, pissed off, and he measured out half of his measure of rum into your cup. Down it in yeah, one he's... swig. <laughs> oh, so since, since, you, since you feel lucky, my friend, how about we use some coin instead? Oh, mate, it's, it's my day to shine. Yes, please, sir. Rio. So he puts down um, a silver piece. You've got to match it, or you can. When it's your turn, you can match it, or you can match it and up it. It's up to you. But it's based on what you roll. So you. Oh. You've, Right, so he goes first this time? And he's put in, so basically being the first round, who is going to be in has got to put in a silver piece. Uh, Anyone I'll, else? I'll put in a silver. Anyone else in? Fair groan. I might be, I might be in. Well, Lomax, you're busy. Yeah, this one, okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once I've uh, officially eaten and or um, like I say, lost purposefully my rum ration to someone else. Like, I'll make it look like it's a good game, but I'll purposefully blow it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll uh, go for a walk out on the deck, you know, up at the bow area or something like that, and just uh, keep an eye out. Okay. Okay, then, so, while you go, um, Marky, roll your 3d4. Okay, so the 3 is your highest, so this guy... He rolls a four, 
he's ready to roll any others. So uh, he's he's got the best shot. So he will put in another silver. Oh, I'll follow in. <laughs> and you can up it if you want to, but um... now I'll match it. Okay. Rightio. Um So you get to roll the. You roll two d four, and you've got to get twos or ones. Seven. It's good, but <laughs> so he's got to get basically um, threes or less on two d four, and he blows it. <laughs> he's he gives you a real, real sour eye, and he sort of pushes the money your way. So you've got another. You don't, um, try, you don't, you don't challenge Varky to a game of luck, friend. Two silvers. <laughs> <laughs> He says, will you give me one last try to win the money back? Oh, you know what? No. Just to be spiteful. <laughs> Good day, sir. He says, well, that's fine. Oh, oh I feel bad. I'll, I'll come back, but I, I, I want to choose the stakes. What are the stakes, he says? Five silver pieces. Done. Done. Oh, <laughs> the stakes are you bust in, bust in and interrupt Lomax. In no. Okay, make your roll. Make your this is your, this will be your last one. So you start with five silver pieces. He meets it. <laughs> Great roll. Four. Two, two. You only need to roll one four and you're okay. So on his first roll, he rolls a four as well. Ooh. So you put in the bet for the next one. Another five. This is uh, like your style. He puts in five as well. Um, <laughs> and since, since, since this is this is our almost our last bet, um, I'll add two more to the pot. So to be in, you've got to keep up with me. All right. Yeah, so no, that'll yeah. be twelve in total for yep. me. Yeah. And I've yep. won two. So if I lose this, I'll be down ten silver. Yeah. Mm. Cool. <laughs> You're getting hustled. Oh, that's alright, that's alright. Okay, gods so, give it, the gods taketh away. Right so you get to roll two dice, and they've got to be threes, or twos, or ones. Oh. 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 But hang on, he's got to make his roll. And when you look at that, he rolls three, three, and three. Oh, three and three, because there's only two rolls. And he scoops up all the matches. Well, that's terribly sad, son. Terribly yeah, sad. Yeah, good game. Good fun. I'll give you one chance to win some money back if you like. Oh! Javaki's clearly got a gambling problem. He's in. <laughs> okay, so he starts off with three cop uh, three silver. All right, uh, I'll I'll go in for three. Okay, you can up it at any time. Oh, well then I'll, I'll up that to six instantly. He'll he'll match it, so that's your six on it. So make your roll. You'll just roll. Got a good chance of. Okay, you got two more to roll. Ah! Oh, let's see. <laughs> so, um, he gives you a bit of a shoot, shoot, bit of a look. And the next one is a four, strangely enough. Um, and because he's leading, he'll say, okay, I'll just put one coin in this time. Alright, I'll match him. What a, what a yeah. good spirited fellow. Yeah. Okay, and you get to roll. Two. Yep. You gotta get ones. I'm out. Yep. And he gets a one and a one. Oh no, he doesn't. He gets a two and a and a one. Ah, good game, sir. I'll hand him over his seventeen pieces. <laughs> right, yeah, so it's, well, thank you very much. I think I think that's enough fun for me tonight, young man. Perhaps we can play again tomorrow if you're still on board. Mate, no, Rock is clearly always in. You've unlocked yeah. the gambling demon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, so... Back those dice, mate. <laughs> okay, it's, it's, it's about now, Lomax, you'll sort of... Uh, the door will open and you'll be able to depart. Uh, I might just poke my head out and then close the door again. Nah! Nothing for air. 
Um, no, no, once you've been um, farewelled, you're out of the cabin. She kicked him out. <laughs> Alright, well, I'll Step walk out. <laughs> and because Lomax is prone to tall stories and gestures, mm -hmm. I will uh, mop my brow, wipe my lips, and adjust my pants. Okay. Huh. Clearly, in victory, where's my five copper friend? <laughs> no, <I call> bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to clearly pester Lomax for details, so. <sighs> Fair snickering. V victory or defeat, Lomax? Which was it? Well, victory, of course. Come on, pay up. Pony up, yo. I don't know, I haven't seen the captain yet. <laughs> she looks like she's fine. <laughs> You're going to go ask her, oh, are you? <laughs> The proof is on you, mate. Pay up. <laughs> she, may, she, may be a while. she may be a little while. Okay, so you start going in the evening. Are you going to do your watches again? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm feeling quite tired. Maybe I'll take the last watch. <laughs> <laughs> right. Shoot. Okay. Oh, God damn it, man. You guys get... These rolls are all in your favour. Little number! Uh, no. Okay, right. The Through the night, nothing happens, apart from you moving. Uh, it's another starry night. Uh, moon's up. It's a bit more cloudy. Um, those of you on watch can see that on the starboard side, that is where the land is, so you're still in the general direction of, of where you want to go. Um, you would have seen a bit of change in terrain around about um, early um, evening, uh, where the sort of tree mountain line sort of starts to give way a little bit to sort of lower hills, um, and sort of it starts to get a bit more just bush and that sort of thing. Um, as I said, the night goes through, and on the morning of the third day, um, I've got to make one wrong. To get the right number. One, one, one. Oh yeah. Now we've done this before, haven't we? It's one D thirty-eight. Where are these cantrips are? Woo! Four. Yeah, four. Four is good. Come on, hippogriffs. Oh, Round two. Yes. Cowardly birds. Right. Okay. Um, where the hell are you? Twenty points. Where are my counter tables? Here we go. Do, 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 do. There. Oh. That's what I've got to do. Sorry. Roll one D one hundred. 14, okay. Hmm. Huh. I'm not really sure about that one. <laughs> How the hell am I going to put that one out? Okay. Sort of as you are, um, yeah. Okay. Um, the ship. It's in the morning and you've sort of changed to a more easterly moving and more of a southeast well starting to sort of go slightly southeasterly. Um, heading towards land. Um, you haven't seen the captain all apart from yesterday. Oh mate. I've been um, collecting this five copies, friend. And you <laughs> basically you as as you're approaching the shoreline um, as I said, the mountain range is gone, the, the hills have gone, it's just bush and forest, that's all you can see. Um, what we can see is that you're sort of heading towards, um, it's, it's a, a shoreline that's broken up with many, many different little, what look to be like mouth, river mouths. Um, the boats, so they change, they step down the sails. Um, they just put on a half sail, they put out some long oars, and they start just... They're actually using the oars for propulsion, they're actually using it to guide the ship. 
Um, as you can see, as they're guiding the ship, um, something takes hold of one of the oars and um, manages to pull the oars out of the hand of the men holding it. Uh, they try to fight back. What you can see in the in the water is something grey green that would be close to around about 24 feet long. Um, would make a fantastic suitcase um, if you could actually take it on. But this is a, either it's a very old crocodile or it's just a very large crocodile for its age. Um, it seems to be quite aggressive. As I said, it's, it's just a crikey doil. Yep. He's not thinking. Is he attacking the ship, sir? He's biting and, and splintering one of the oars. Oh, mate, I'm, I'm loading the crossbow, re going to the side that he's attacking and trying to shoot it in the face. Sh shoot it in the face? You mean just uh, shoot aiming it? for one of his beady eyes, mate. But yeah, just in general, hit its main major body. You can try to shoot in the eye. It's called a cool shot, but it's a huge penalty to hit. No, no, God, no! I'm gonna try <laughs> hit it. But in my mind, I'm thinking, come on, eye. <laughs> it's um the beefy little weasel. Oh, don't mention the weasel. Okay. So make you roll then. Am I able to ready my crossbow and then take a ready shot first? I don't think you're what, ready. I just went to the yeah. oar. Um, what, what I'd probably say is that you can spend around aiming and get a plus one, but that's about it. It is All thrashing right. about in the in the water, you know. Sorry, it's, just to be clear as well, I'm pretty sure a dex of 17 is plus two to hit, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, right. So your thacker uh, is... Uh, Vaki's sad. Right, so your crossbow bolt goes shloop into the water and as it misses the um, huge crocodile. You, ba the guys basically start, like, they've got some long spears and they start poking in the water at it. It just seems to make it more angry. It seems to snap a couple of the spears and they just basically chuck the oar at it and leave it. Um, ah. Yeah, that's, it's just... It, it pretty much destroys the ore. Uh, you keep on moving inland, you sort of start passing the river head, the mouth. Um, it's not really a, a mouth, it's just the water is coming out, it gets quite shallow quickly. They're using the oars to keep into a very narrow um, trench in the middle, um, moving along. So apparently this place called Coom is roughly a mile inland. From there, so they're going to be going into the um, sort of the what they call the mangrove um, mangroves. I guess there's freshwater mangroves. I'm not sure there are now. Um, sort of a mangrovey sort of place, more than anything else, with the odd small island of actual dirt enough dirt to actually have proper trees on it. Um, mangroves mean. Yeah, but really, really tall, quite thick. Um, mangroves. Um, there's a couple of times where the boat sort of um, beaches itself and they've got to move and um, where you guys are called on to push um, with the very long oars, get it off the sandbar or whatever it's come up on and then they find their way through another route sort of thing. Um, apparently one of the guys says uh, they, there's never a simple way to get into this place because in the mangroves the, the sand moves all the time. So a way that you've come in last time doesn't usually exist the next time unless you're really lucky and we obviously aren't because we're having to go a different way. So it's going to take them a wee while. It's going to probably take them almost the whole rest of the day to, to get to Coombe um, just because of the navigational difficulties. As you get deeper, um, you, yeah, you get that whole hot sort of mangrovey, swampy sort of smell coming around. Um, the air starts to fill up with lots and uh, more bugs and things. So you're sort of waking yourself a bit more. Um, 
the first mate's um, getting a bit tired of them beaching the, the thing. So he's got what he's got is he's got two sounders at the front of the ship, and they keep on throwing sanders, sounders down. They've, they've basically, what they're using now is they're using the oars to propel, propel as well as to navigate, because they've pulled the, the um, sail down. There's just nothing coming into the mangrove itself, and enough air. So it's just very slow moving through, and um, yeah, so the first mate, as I said, is getting a bit angry with the um, sounders as they move forward, because they're getting it wrong every now and then. Um, it's very slow going, and sometimes they've got to back up a little bit and try a different passageway. Uh, what you can see in the in the mangrovey swamp and bush, um, you do see some fish. You do see some more crocodiles, alligators, whatever it is. Um, that's really interesting. Because on the encounter table I asked for freshwater creatures and it tells me here in the book that crocodiles are normally found in the salt water. So we'll change that to alligators. Interesting. Um, anyway. Um, there's various birds, some birds that you've never really seen before, some really pretty pretty coloured birds uh, that move. Um, and it's around about early mid-afternoon where you thought Solani sort of gets sight of some sort of establishment because there's some smoke um, coming up um, and the closer you get you can actually see um, several sort of buildings when you sort of arrive at Coom, um what they've done is they've built on the mangroves and they've sort of put down um, columns into the water the houses are built up way up off the water um, and then more buildings have been built on top of those buildings sort of thing so it's and it's all put together with precarious sort of um, tank ways and things that interlink everything together so that sort of as people are moving through so people are either in boats or, or they sort of there's no actual land as such to be in so then you arrive in Coombe. Coombe is about a dozen to twenty buildings put together. Um, doesn't look like much. People here, uh, they make they look like they just managed to make ends meet. Um, some people are fishing off the side. Some people are, you know, everyone's doing something. There's no, no one's sort of just leaning back and doing nothing. Uh, it does seem to be a place of, of enterprise. Um, finally, the ship sidles up to a, um, a particular gangway, um, and the first mate announces, well, here's Coom. We'll have the other oh, 30, mate. thank you. Fia is rushing to get off the ship. Yeah. I will, um, you know, settle up with the uh, remaining 30. Mm -hmm. And, uh bid them a good voyage from wherever sort of that may take them. Yep, well, um, you probably could be coming back this way in a, a month or so, so if you're here and you need to travel anywhere else, we might be able to do more business. Mm -hmm. Well, if we see you again, uh, it will be uh, a grand uh, tale to tell, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. A fine reunion. Right, so you, you guys walk off with Bill, Bruce, sorry, who is quite um, the object. Um, lots of kids sort of come up and look at him and, and pet him and not quite sure what to make of him. Ha! <laughs> Bruce. Bruce the donkey. He's famous, I tell you. All right, so what are you doing with them? I'll continue to walk him through the crowd. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. So most of these gangways sort of go from like three feet wide to around about mm, eight feet wide. So you don't have like huge crowds, but like you've got kids sort of hanging off things and just running up and touching them and saying, "Can I touch him, Mister? Will he hurt me? What is he? Oh, what is it? What is touch it? Him. Not yeah." Touch them there, but you can pat them. 
right, so they ask you what it is and all that sort of stuff. Um, he's a Bruce. A Bruce, right? And uh, and one 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 kid uh, says, a slightly older kid. You sort of see that sort of look in his eyes. He's going to say something. Um, it says, so do Bruce's taste dice? No, I'm new. They taste like ass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, excellent. Okay, so, um, like chewing leather boots. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, what are they? What good are they? Well, as you can see, carry things. Oh, you know won't be good in the swamp. You get eaten double quick. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay, so, yeah, so you're looking for a place to lay down your head sort of thing. Yes. Um, so there is, um, you, you do get directed to one old woman who sort of has a room to spare where you can all put in. She says, but that animal ain't coming into my house. It's going to have to stay outside. Oh. How rude. Bruce is one of us. I was about to say, don't talk to Vaki like that. Nah. Nah. Mm. Then I shall stay with Bruce. I'm mm -hmm. sure Bruce will be happy outside. Okay, so this is a sort of a random sort of thing. Um, okay, so you sort of get into this small room, but at least it's got a door. Uh, it's got some high windows that sort of have sort of cloth over it um, and it's just got a basic shutter to close it and she says you know don't undo the cloth because the insects will come in at night time and there will be a pin cushion by morning um, so just be aware of that and if your friend's going to stay outside she rattles around in a drawer and she pulls out she says you probably want him to apply this so he stays away uh, the, the insects stay away from him at night too And yes. she, she's Very asking, well. she's asking for um, four, four, cop, four copper pieces. Hmm. This is for Bruce's protection, right? No. No. This is, this is, this is for the room. Mm. Oh, for the room. Ah, mm. that that's fine. That's fine. That's all good. No worries. Is uh, someone going to give her the four copper pieces? <laughs> yeah, if Fia reaches into her pouch and gives her a silver, um, asks her what the food situation's like. She looks at it, she bites it, and she says, Ah. What, what? She says, Do I get to keep the whole thing? Yeah, you can keep the whole thing, but... Oh, well, I can... Again... Push. Again, what is the food situation like? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some, I'll give you some, um, bread fruit and some fish stew. Alrighty. Having said that, um, could you give us a bit more information about Coom? Um, we've heard that there's a rather interesting, um, animal living near here. A dragon, to be specific. Well, you don't want to be going there and rolling that creature up. Oh, I assume, I assume. But um, could you give us any information with regards to uh, how Coom has lived so peacefully with the dragon nearby? We don't years? bother it. It doesn't know we're here. It doesn't know you're here, so there's no... There's no tributes. There's no tributes. There's no tithes you pay to the dragon. You just sort of keep to yourselves, and that's it. Why the hell would we pay tithes to the dragon? Have you looked around here? We're poor. What could we possibly yeah, offer a dragon? Ah. I don't know, human meat. But anyway, um, what about other weird guests like ourselves? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyone else come through recently, asking about the dragon? She looks a little bit more furtive, a little bit more sort of sideways. She said, well, why would you be interested to know that? Can we shake some coins in a non-sleazy way, sleazy as possible way? <laughs> I'll 
Well, Fia, Fia grabs her coin pouch out and so it just sort of bounces it in her hand. Whereas Valky is practically licking his coin pouch, trying to be suggestive. Oh, God. <laughs> she looks at you really weirdly. <laughs> she jabs it. Yeah. If, you could, elbow, if yeah. you could tell your company's fool to stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. All right, I start cradling it instead, right. gently. Right. Swift jab to the... Uh, right. Yeah, swift jab from the elbow. She said, so, the, well, yeah, you, you can answer my question. I might be able to answer your question. So, I don't think Vaki should speak right now, so I'm going to mm -hmm. just cradle my coin pouch. Um... Oh. Well, there's there's been some damage to a town near here, and um, the dragon. Well, so was there's there's been some damage to a town near here that um, may or may not have been associated with the dragon, and um, there's been some um, sightings of the dragon doing odd things you wouldn't you wouldn't normally see him doing. So we're just wondering if anyone has dropped by anyone has been trying to communicate with the dragon recently only a madman or a fool would try to communicate with the dragon she says no. any mad nevertheless, or fools yeah, past? <laughs> nevertheless has there been any madmen or fools or even people of interest you wouldn't normally see in Coombe perhaps dressed in uh, fineries you wouldn't normally see stopping past here any yeah she sort of yeah. wanders off a little bit with her mind. She says, yeah, well, people think, oh, Gertie, don't see or hear, no nothing, hey. But Gertie or she sees and hears things, but you still haven't answered my question. Why do you need to know? To save the local township. Good woman. It's a woman, right? Yes. An elderly woman. Yes. Uh, we've been tasked with finding out. Uh, we've been tasked with... Uh, saving the good people uh, from various towns near here. Um, we, f we fear that there may be a danger to other small villages like your, your own village, and um, we're, tr we're trying to get on top of it before it gets out of hand. She says, you don't think the big beast would come here, do you? Uh, it could, it could. I mean, there's been sightings around the area, um, damage done. I know you've lived, you know, cohabitatively with it for a while, but it could come here. Because some trying fools to figure this are out. stirring it up, and we just need to find those fools. She looks at you Jab. again, and she says, is Jab. he for real? Oh, mate. Varky's in, like, some power pose right this second. Okay. He's semi for real. Yes. <laughs> he has many bruises on his ribs because we jab him about 20 times a day, but, yes, he's for real. Regrettably. Right. She says, well... I might have seen somebody. Bounces the coin pouch up and down a couple of times. <laughs> so Vaki's trying to contain his, his urges. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she looks right. at the coin, uh, coin pouch. Well, I mean, if... If you want to protect other villagers like your own and potentially your own, it would be great if you could give us the information. Obviously, we'd be willing to... Make it worth your while. Mm. Bounce, bounce. Bounce, bounce. Well, she says. There was, there was a strange man about mm, two weeks ago. He came by a big fancy ship that they couldn't come in. He came in a small step up mast boat with a mm. whole lot of men wearing silly metal armour. Mm -hmm. What armour, sorry? All in black. Metal armour. They pull oh. out of that thing, they're going to sink to the bottom. Yeah, the kind you wouldn't wear in a swamp. Mm. Yeah. Wait, is the town we come from swamp-like, or the town we're going to swamp-like? You're in a swamp-like town. Swamp. Yeah, the other town is quite hoi polloi. It's fancy as fuck. So he, he came off a fancy ship, Dressed in um, fineries and well, he an came off some armor. sort of big ship, but I don't know what. I never saw it. Did they give yeah. you a name, woman? Did you get a name? I said I saw. I didn't say I heard that much. You see your flag with colours on it? <laughs> no, but I saw who he was talking to. Oh. In the shadows. Who was he talking to? 
And did he have any herald heraldry on his clothes? Were there any any he flags? He was wearing or black clothes. Black clothes. It's the point. Uh, our friends in the black robes. No, just nondescript. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. All so, right. so she goes and talks to her about how she saw um, this man. Like they came in, they made a big song and dance of their arrival, spent a bit of money, or well, spread a bit of money around. Not mm -hmm. for that much, but she seemed to think that they were trying to um, get in the good books of everybody. Um, we a few palms. Then um, she just kept an eye on them when, when, you know, she's got her way. Got a lot of nosy neighbours, mate. The and um, yeah, she saw them under O'Dirk's house in a boat talking. She couldn't make out exactly who she was talking to. He was talking to, but he was talking to somebody in the boat, and it wasn't one of her his men in the metal armor. It was someone else. And, and sorry, she under what? Flash. Under, under what house did you say? O'Durks. 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 Okay. I'm hearing D. D for dog, or am I wrong? Yeah. O'Durks. O'Durks. Okay. Yeah, O'Durks. Yeah. Um, under O'Durks' house in a boat. Alrighty. Yeah, a small one of their the little boats. Um, yep. The only thing she saw was um, this other person um, was wearing some sort of red shirt or something underneath their cloak. They red seemed to be on. having quite a long discussion in the boat. I couldn't get close enough to hear much or anything really. But I, I did, did hear them mention the name of the Black Beast. Sorry, what was that last bit? Uh, the name of the Black Beast. She said the she name of the Black Beast. Oh, okay, yes. yep. Yes, they were discussing the dragon. Fair enough. Yeah. And who is this O'Dirk you speak of? O'Dirk. Sounds like a real O'Jerk. He's, he's just <laughs> Jab. He's one of my neighbours. He's a fisherman. Fisherman, you say? Okay, mm. fair enough. And where might be? Where Where is this O'Dirk's place? Three houses down around there. Three houses Boston. down already. Mm. Alright, Barky right. draws his sword and starts walking towards it. Oh so, my god. <laughs> can, someone can someone restrain him, honestly? Uh, Varky's <laughs> joking. Varky's just walking and talking in the third person. And Judge Varky. <laughs> Lomax, honestly. <laughs> rain, rain him in, mate. Lomax. I'll follow him. Seems like he's got a lot of constitution. <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah. legendary constitution. Okay, I, I wonder how much he's expecting. Um, I hand her a couple of silver pieces and then try to judge the look on her face. Well, she seems surprised. Surpri happily surprised? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all right, that's cool. Yeah, no, I give her a couple of silver. Thank her. Mm -hmm. um, ask her if, if she sees anything else or remembers anything else to uh, contact me immediately and I'll be sure to reimburse her for it. Mm hmm. All right. Well, I think we can settle in. Maybe get some food. Uh, mm -hmm. Myself, I'm happy to be on dry land. But well. um, if you guys want to rush off to O'Dirks immediately, feel free. I'll. Oh, you're saying a tavern or O'Dirks? Uh, there's no yeah. tavern Where's here. Where's Folmic? Folmic, a missing Folmic voice. Well, I know. Folmic? Unfortunately, I like, he's not here. I feel like Folmic would be going to this house first. Possibly. Mm. It'd probably be what a good game. What time of the day are we at? You are in the early afternoon. Uh, sorry, mid afternoon, because it's uh, see that it's almost all day fishing. to get here. Let's head to the tavern. There is yeah, no it's tavern. It's getting pretty dark. The gangways are pretty slim. We don't want the obviously drunk from digging into the rum rations, Varky slipping off and dying in a mangrove somewhere. You sure you don't want that? Varky's Whoa. die anyway. Having said that, fair enough. Well, it's up to, it's up to you guys, but uh, Fee would love to get a meal into her, but, yeah. Done. Done? Done deal. Let's go to the tavern. All right. There is no tavern. No. Barky's now rancorous is the only word I can think to describe yeah. it. I see, a, I see a lot of anger. I see a lot of anger surfacing soon. I was about to say it be some kind of social gathering point, but that'll be it. It won't be yeah, an actual tavern. Oh, Does anywhere serve beer? 
Ale. Oh, no, exactly what do you swerve here? A swamp donkey. Oh, so they do know what a fucking donkey is. Yeah. Oh, mate, it's a swamp. <laughs> There's got to be moonshine. Surely. They, <laughs> they make a substance that would be close oh, to vodka. Oh, you, know what, you know what it'll be? It'll be as close to chartreuse as you can get. <laughs> Want to know why? Because I swear if you take someone's herb garden, pour water in it, let it rot and ferment, bottle it, you've got chartreuse. Oh, <laughs> mate. Varky is sold. Sold, mate. Right. So where, where is the local moonshinery? There is the local. <laughs> Pe people like drinking I just drunk. gather together wherever and that's it. If they've got a they've bought a jug out with them, they bought a jug out with them. If they haven't, they haven't. They just talk. Oh dear god. I'm just setting up camp at okay. the Dirk's house. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Um, situation seems pretty bleak. Then again, none of us considered how we're going to get out of here after we've, um... No! My internet! Wait, can people still hear me? Yep. Can no, yep. Oh, yep. I can't hear... Um... Uh... I'm actually going to have to take off, guys. Okay. Oh, I technically well, should take off, we'll, but, um... we'll leave it there for tonight. We will come back next Monday. Alrighty. That's so we'll out this hell in a fucking drinkless, tavernless swamp. Yeah. yeah. Who knows how long we're going to be here. I should Ooh. have gambled for more rum. Here you go. Oh, cool. God. Oh. The return okay. trip. What return trip? This is our <laughs> home now. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds pretty bleak, doesn't it? Hang on, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just stop the recording. <laughs>